Welcome! In this session we will talk about using Pool Party for RDF transformation processes and ETL or Extract Transform Load jobs. We will mainly focus on unified views, which is a component part of Pool Party Semantic Integrator. We will talk about what unified views is, what it can do, and finally take a look at a use case where we see how the ETL processes using pool party and unified views can be leveraged in applications. Unified views is part of the pool party semantic integrator. Let's recall the pool party semantic integrator architecture. We find unified views in the middle. On the left side we have pool party as a semantic middleware used to create your knowledge models. The bottom layer shows your diverse data sources that you want to analyze and integrate. The analysis can be done with the pool party extractor, such as annotations of text, but the integrate part of mapping the different data types and connecting them in a knowledge graph happens in unified views. After you integrate the data, you store it and use it for your end applications. So, Unified Views is a tool for data processing tasks and it is focused on RDF and linked data processing. It has its own graphical interface. It has a canvas where one can create a visual representation of the data processes. And a data process is composed of data processing units connected into a pipeline. Unified Views provides a user interface where the data processing tasks can be defined, adjusted, debugged, scheduled or monitored. This is Unified Views and this is the screen you get when uh, you successfully log in. There is an available header menu uh, which can be used to navigate through different features and I would like to start with the pipelines overview. Here you see all the existing uh, already created data processing tasks and pipelines and uh, some information about who created them, when was the last execution time, how much uh, it takes to run the pipeline and uh, the status. Let's jump into an example our pipeline. We'll take the MarkLogic webinar demo. Uh, so we see first this is the canvas where we have our uh, pipeline defined. And on the left here we have the existing components of the pipeline which are called data processing units. There are data processing units to extract the data, to transform the data, to load and also to uh, check the quality or validate the data. Um, so these uh, data processing units have different uh, codes, color codes. The red ones are for extractors, the blue purple ones are transformers and the green ones are loaders. So uh, we have for instance uh, some of the extractor examples are um, data processing units that can connect to Sparkle endpoints, to a relational database endpoint, uh, run a HTTP request or um, download uh, files from the file server and so on. Next we have the transformers in blue or purple and they are used to uh, work with the data that you uh, extract into unified views. So for instance uh, you can transform the files to RDF or uh, you can unzip uh, if you have a zipped file on the file server um, then you can for instance use uh, tabular to relational or tabular to map Excel files or uh, relational databases to RDF or uh, simply use Sparkle queries 
uh, to manipulate basically the data to bring it in the shape that you needed later for your end application. And uh, you have then loaders in green which help you then um, store the data. Either you store it directly in Virtuoso or in a different triple store or even a relational database uh, or you run a HTTP request uh, or you simply upload it back to the file server. So these are the tools that uh, you have available uh, the canvas and the different data processing units that let you uh, des uh, design the data flow uh, for your use case. The DPUs you create are connected with edges and they indicate the data flow process. An entire uh, data processing task which uh, connects all DPUs is what we call a pipeline. Each DPU has uh, its own configuration. If I double click on one, I see uh, the input variable it needs. For instance, the pool party extractor needs um, a host name, the API, uh, called the project used and of course the authentication and so need uh, the edges. They basically connect the previous output of uh, the DPU to uh, the input of the next DPU and then you can map it. In the end, you will have a specific pipeline for, uh, specially designed for your use case. The pipelines can look uh, very um, different and uh, spe specific to uh, the use case. They can also get very complex. So let's take this pipeline. This pipeline looks like this and uh, it has a connector to uh, a confluence that scrapes um, pages and further um, annotates them with pool party and then stores them uh, in Virtuoso. Another pipeline um, can look like this. And you see it can get more and more complex. In the pipeline overview, you see each pipeline has um, some specific actions. You can run the pipeline, you can debug it, you can schedule it. For instance, if you need to run uh, it every 24 hours because you're ingesting new data, you can copy it, you can jump into designing it and delete it. Um, Another part I want to show is the execution monitor. This is the um, overview where you could look at uh, specifically your running pipelines or pipelines that were already um, successfully running. If I click on one, I get to see, for instance, also during uh, the time it is running, in what event, uh, in what DPU it currently is, and if the pipeline has a problem, I can look in the log and try to fix uh, the exact problem that occurred. And the scheduler is the view where you can create, um, like a cron job, a specific timetable for uh, running your pipeline. You select one of the uh, available pipelines and you can simply um, configure when do you want it to have it running. What are some of the use cases where you would need unified views? Basically unified views use cases are those uh, use cases where you would need a semantic integrator set up. An example is when you need to integrate and enrich different sources of data and expose them in a search application to your users. 
Let's follow such a simple use case as the next example. Say we have a lot of documents which we want to make searchable in a faceted search based on a taxonomy we have already created about a domain we are interested in. The use case uh, documents are stored in Mark Logic, but they can as well be uh, in a relational database or on a file server or in a CMS. The taxonomy we will make use of is the World Bank Group's topical and knowledge domains and areas of expertise which contains concepts about climate change, education, trade, water and so on. This is the pool party uh, World Bank topical taxonomy and you see here it has uh, a lot of concepts gathered around different topics. And this is the taxonomy we will be using to annotate the documents. This is the end application we would like to create um, to uh, make our documents that are presented on the right searchable. And we see on the left the facets available to us. There's a geolocation uh, facet uh, and the World Bank uh, topic thesaurus. Uh, also presented in a hierarchical structure. And down here uh, you can filter by date. So let's search for um, a concept. These are suggestions coming from Pool Party. And we see then on the right the filtered results. We can also add uh, a little geolocation filter. We have an info box um, exposing, for instance, some more information from the thesaurus about the filters we have selected. And if we open one document, we get even more details. We'll get some similar documents. We get the full text. And in a cu uh, quick view, we also get the structure of uh, the knowledge models used. For the faceted search application we saw, we will make use of this uh, data processing pipeline to prepare the data. So let's look into uh, the details of uh, the DPUs uh, connected here. We have, for instance, the extractor file download DPU, which uh, calls um, a pool party server uh, API, specifically the uh, work, uh, World Bank's group's topic um, taxonomy. And this taxonomy from this server is then exported in um, a turtle uh, file and um, uh, uploaded then to the file server. Uh, this file is then uh, in, uh, transformed into uh, turtle and further uh, ingested into unified views for further use. The Sparkle endpoint uh, extractor DPU is connecting to another server where a Mark Logic installation is, uh, uh, which contains basically our documents. Uh, so we query to retrieve those documents. These documents are then fed uh, as input in the next DPU, which is the Pool Party Extractor DPU. Uh, which is calling uh, the annotate extractor API call. And this annotate uh, extractor API call uh, will retrieve uh, the RDF of the annotations um, of these documents based on the World Bank uh, Group's uh, topic taxonomy. And uh, then we use the RDF graph merger, which uh, basically merges the uh, taxonomy file uh, and the results of the annotated documents into one graph. Next, we make use of a Sparkle Construct uh, uh, Transformer DPU. Um, so this is used for um, preparing basically the data that is merged in the common graph 
to have a div in a nicer format to um, be ready to uh, integrate it then into the front end application and we store this graph um, we store this data into a turtle format and we upload it on the server this uh, file which is a turtle file that we um, create here in the pipeline will be then manually added to the MarkLogic server which stores usually XML documents so there is a specific process to upload uh, RDF back into MarkLogic and then that data uh, is used to query um, on the front end the documents exposed in a faceted search manner. I would also like to show how easy it is to design uh, such a pipeline. Let's say we also would like to connect a relational database um, and um, add this data to the front-end application. So what we would do is we would uh, select for us a relational um, database connector like this you drag and drop it into the canvas and then we would need a relational to RDF transformer and now we need to connect uh, these DPUs in the pipeline so we configure the edges and the output would uh, probably merge in the big graph of course these DPUs have to be configured we have to specify the uh, relational database endpoint and very important in the relational to RDF we need to specify the model that we use to do this uh, mapping and then uh, it can all be stored into one big graph and uh, constructed for the front-end application Unified Views lets you design your specific data processing tasks through DPUs. We have already the basic extractor, transformer and loader DPUs uh, available, but if any specific processing unit is missing, it can be developed. Unified Views is a Java-based tool and its documentation explains in detail how to get started to create your own DPU, which can then be uh, imported into Unified Views for further use. In this session we focused on Unified Views, which is used for data processing tasks. Data processing units are designed on a canvas to represent a data flow pipeline. We explained a MarkLogic-based faceted search use case from raw documents to application interface. Thank you for following us.